Right, I am going to start by telling you a story. And it's a story of my friend learning to drive. He's sitting in his car, driving the instructor to the left. Everything's going OK, until a car comes up his behind. Come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Then another car comes to the left. Come on, I've got somewhere to go. To the left, there's kids playing football. To the right, there's younger kids learning to ride bikes. There's pedestrians everywhere. There's a massive tree in the way, and the road is going round the bend, and he can't see. He slowly brings the car to a halt. He's frozen. The driving instructor calmly says, I'll take a breath, <laughs> calmly says, stop looking at the things around you and look at the space between things. My friend takes the breath, puts it in gear, and looks at the space, drives his car through the space. Many, many years later, my friend still remembers that lesson, not in how to drive, but in remembering that when things don't make sense, look for the space between things. It's quite a driving instructor, right? So what my friend was doing, he was trying to piece together all the things around him to build a picture of understanding so that the world makes sense to him. He was using his technical knowledge, his technical skills of the road, the rules of the road, the mechanics of driving and controlling his car. But there were too many things moving around outside that he couldn't control. So he couldn't build his picture of understanding, which is why he froze. The driving instructor couldn't wind down his window and go, oh, you lot, go home. Right? So instead, he offered a third skill. And it's the third skill of spatial awareness and timing. And that is the ability to see the space between things, move through it, time when you move through it, generating options as you go. Now, the driving instructor has to have that skill. Us less so because we have fewer moving things in our world. So many of us build, navigate our world on several pillars. And one of those pillars is on the fact that we'll get a better education than our parents, which will lead to a better job than our parents, better pension than our parents, better house than our parents, better health care than our parents. And in theory, we will live longer, prosperous lives than our parents. But many, many more people and now saying that these pillars are at best moving, crumbling, or vanishing. Yeah. Many people say that artificial intelligence is going to come along. Oh, I'll get a bit dry mouth here. <laughs> artificial intelligence is going to come along and do a lot of the jobs we already do. We have climate change, which is already fundamentally changing how we live our lives. And today, we have two, two wars. Let's hope we don't get any more. But one thing is certain, uh, more and more things are going to be moving in our lives. Okay? So my idea worth sharing, the reason why I'm here, is because I think the lesson that driving instructor taught my friend, we all need to learn. We all need to learn to stop looking at all the moving things around us and move through the space between things, generating options as we go. But there's a problem. The problem is, most of us have spent our lives jigsawing our world together. And when we jigsaw our world together, and we see a space, we tend to see the space as something we need to fill. You know, going to get another piece of jigsaw and fill the hole. And that can be filled with another person, or getting another qualification. Or we can squeeze, cheat, you know, squeeze the jigsaw together so that the space doesn't exist but it never occurs to us to go through the space, generating options as we go. Mm -hmm. That means if, if we don't learn to see space differently, the chances of, th as things start moving more and more and more, and we keep trying to jigsaw it together, more and more of us are going to enter the frozen zone that my friend did learning to drive. Now, I have had the joy 
of spending 15 years. <laughs> oh. Doing amazing things with autistic kids, autistic teenagers, and autistic adults. It was life changing. You can see what it did to me. These aren't tears of, 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 of worry or fear. They are tears of just the emotional joy of spending time with autistic people. And I'm going to introduce you to a fictional person called Peter. Okay? Now, what I've done with Peter is I've extracted a common point of difference that many autistic people have. And I've just given it to Peter. So there isn't an autistic person like Peter, because he's really one-dimensional, and I've really turboed it up. I've really enhanced it. Okay? So Peter is not autistic. Peter is a point of difference for you to help express the point of difference. Now, what Peter does is he sees one thing. Then another thing. Then another thing. He sees one tree. Another tree. And another tree. Never the forest. Okay, so he never sees the bigger picture. Okay, to make that even more real, a bull. So this is a bull. This is Peter. Peter only sees the bull. He doesn't see the space around the bull. He just sees the bull. So that when Peter goes to try and get the bull, he has no awareness that the bull will move. Because why would it? Because he can't see where it would move to. Okay? So he's absolutely only see one thing at a time. So you can imagine, Peter has three moving things in his life. He's going to be dumped straight in that frozen zone that my friend was learning to drive. Now, it makes sense, doesn't it? We can help Peter learn to process more than one thing at a time. We found another way. And the other way is to give Peter an experience of space, to feel it. And when he feels it, he looks for it. When he looks for it, he sees it. When he sees space between things, he can navigate his way through it. We, Peter can navigate his world without having to build a jigsaw of understanding. I mean, how cool is that? Just nothing but flow, generation, and options. And it is jaw-dropping watching autistic kids learn to move through the world that way. Okay, so we can all experience what it feels like for space. So you can imagine, we all stand up and we go in this big scrum. We are tight. We are all together. Suddenly we take three steps back. The energy plummets. That's because space is the absence of things. It's where there's no energy. That's where we can all feel and experience space. Now, helping Peter experience space, we play games. We play games by getting in each other's way. Not to stop each other from moving, but to play a game of movement where we try and get, create space so we can try and get past each other. It's a dance of space. Okay? And we're trying to get past each other to be in the right place at the right time to give each other an option just when our teammates is running out. So it's very connected, very supportive, very creative. So when we were doing this, more and more people wanted to join us because it's a lot of fun. And more and more players came in, and more and more players brought a jigsaw of understanding how they wanted to play. So they couldn't see space, they plugged space. So we started introducing the third skill. Hopefully that sounds familiar. We're now saying, here's introduced, look for the space between things, spatial awareness and timing. We then started to coach the players to move through the space between things. We were doing what the driving instructor did for my friend. So it turns out that if we together, connected, play games to heighten our spatial awareness and timing, we can, connected and together, navigate this world without having to understand how, why anything is making sense. So we can do this. We have got this. Let's play. <laughs> <laughs>